everyone and welcome to the Sidereal Insights Astro Update for uh, January 28th, 2020. I'm Phaedra. I'm the astrologer and artist of Mystic Physic Astrology. Um, and I want to welcome you to the broadcast. So every two weeks what we do is we explore the um, astrology of the current planetary transits across the heavens from a Western sidereal perspective. And so uh, in my practice, I use the Fagan Bradley Zodiac. And so all of the uh, degrees and signs that we're going to be talking about today, all the planetary positions, uh, everything will be oriented according to, of course, that Faith and Bradley Zodiac. Um, and you may want to have your scenario needle chart handy while we uh, talk about some of the topics today. So if you don't know your stereo sign placements there's an easy to use online calculator at mysticphysic.com and so what i'm going to do is refresh my browser here real quick so i can pull up the comments on my laptop and i'm going to paste a link for that free calculator into the comments but welcome 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 so whew, january nearly over the first month of the year almost gone already can you believe it I sure can't. So here's the broadcast. Here's the link. There you go. Should be all set. Let me grab my notes, get them back in front of me, and let's get going. So um, I have things kind of positioned a little weird here today, so I apologize for that. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between uh, my notes and the camera because I've had to rearrange my uh, studio, my broadcasting uh, room, which is also my office, um, a couple times in the last month or so. So I'm still kind of ironing out the kinks of the new setup. So I apologize. Thanks for bearing with me on that. Um, so my aim with this broadcast really is to give you guidance on how you can consciously use the energy of the transiting planets to affect your lives in a positive way. And so that's really kind of the idea. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching and want to invite you to like and share the broadcast. If you know anyone who might uh, be interested in what we're going to be talking about today, exploring astrological transits from the Fagan Bradley Sidereal Zodiac. And remember, you can also follow Mystic Physic on Facebook, and that way uh, you'll know when we go live every other Monday, usually, although today uh, we had to reschedule. I was feeling a little under the weather yesterday. Um, and then also remember we have a YouTube channel as well that you can subscribe to. But today what we're going to be talking about are some upcoming sign changes. There are quite a few sign changes that are taking place here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to be talking about prepping for Mercury retrograde, the very first Mercury retrograde of the year, if you can believe it. Uh, and we're going to maybe talk a little bit about the upcoming full moon in Cancer. But let me kind of recap where we're at for right now. So we're in this kind of sweet spot little window that happens uh, early in the year, or at least it has been happening early in the year, where we have all the planets in direct motion all at the same time. We just had uh, what'll be our only new moon for this year under those conditions, the new moon in Capricorn, which was January 24th at nine degrees Capricorn. Uh, that is the best new moon really this year to, to make an initiation with the full support of the entire solar system uh, behind you. So I would strongly encourage you use that new moon to set an intention, take action. It's not too late to do that. It was just about four days ago. So we still have the energy of that particular new moon active for us. I would encourage you to do it for your rising sign and for your sun sign as well, just because uh, uh, it being the one new moon that we have this year with all that supportive energy, uh, don't let it go to waste. Take advantage of it. Um, we're going to have all the planets in direct motion only until February 17th. Mercury begins his first retrograde of the year, February 17th. And so that's just, you know, a little over two weeks away. I would encourage you these next couple of days between now and February 2nd, when Mercury enters uh, his retrograde shadow, uh, use these last few days to wrap up any important Mercury-related business that you have going on right now that you need to have finished before that retrograde arrives. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna be better situated to just wait and kind of hang tight until after Mercury's retrograde is over. Uh, so if you have anything kind of last minute, anything that you need to wrap up, do that now between um, today and February 2nd, that's when Mercury will enter the retrograde shadow. Um, and if you need kind of a refresher or if you're not super familiar with how Mercury retrogrades function, uh, here's a link and I'll include this in the video description if you're watching the replay on YouTube. This is a link to uh, my blog post about Mercury retrograde and how you can survive them. It'll 
uh, kind of give you a, an overview of what Mercury retrograde experiences are like, what you need to know to navigate them kind of as, <laughs> as uh, smoothly as possible. And then it'll give you an opportunity to uh, download a little guide on how you can use Mercury retrograde, depending on what house the retrograde is transiting for you according to your own natal chart. And what's awesome about this guide is that it doesn't matter what type of a zodiac you use, whether you use a sidereal zodiac or whether you use a tropical zodiac, uh, it, it, it will teach you exactly what you need to know to navigate no matter what type of astrology you practice in that sense. So I would encourage you to kind of freshen up, take a look at your chart, see where this particular Mercury retrograde is going to affect you, and then kind of make a plan for how you want to use it. Because having a plan in mind for Mercury retrograde makes them a lot easier to navigate and almost enjoyable, if you if you want to say that. Um, I do tend to look forward to Mercury retrogrades now that I really have a handle on how to use them. So. I want to kind of uh, digress a little bit in our talk about current transits to talk about this last eclipse season that we came through. Of course, I did a broadcast about that. If you want to catch the full broadcast, um, I have a link for that. Uh, so this is the December uh, 2019, January 2020 eclipse season. And the broadcast that I did, I went over critical dates and degrees. So I'm not going to go all the way into that right now because you can always go back and rewatch if you want to know what those dates and degrees are, especially if you want to look back and see if anything significant happened to you on those dates. Uh, but what I want to call out is that we're past the big hump of this eclipse season. It's kind of winding down, although there's still some activity uh, to be aware of and to be watchful for. So if you were affected by the December 26th eclipse, to, or the Christmas Day eclipse even, depending on uh, uh, <laughs> where you are in the world, that particular eclipse was in Sidereal Sagittarius, 9 degrees, 5 minutes. Uh, so if you were affected by that, that would be if you had a planet or point at that degree of an air or fire sign. Keep in mind, January 24th and 25th, just a few days ago, there could have been news delivered for you related to that, the, the Christmas eclipse. And then coming up again uh, around the 23rd of February, you'll want to keep your eye on that date as well for potential eclipse news. Now, if you were affected by the eclipse that we had just on January 10th earlier this month, that one was at 25 degrees of Gemini. So if you have a planet or point at 25 degrees of an air or fire sign, uh, then that uh eclipse will be active again coming up on the 8th and 9th of February. So just going into our February new moon and then again on the 9th and 10th of March. So a couple of dates to keep an eye on still related to that eclipse activity. We could still see some news or some events uh, transpire that uh, are related to whatever themes the eclipse series is activating for you if you're directly affected. Um, and I do have a broadcast on eclipses and how to navigate them if you haven't seen it. Three eclipse essentials you need to know. You can catch that at the website uh, at mysticphysic.com slash eclipse dash essentials if you want to review. Uh, but I wanted to call out those dates because we just had a couple that transpired and we have a couple coming up here in early February. And I felt it might be important to kind of review uh, what those dates were because eclipse uh, transits can be very significant. They can bring a lot of really... Um, major change to our lives that we just uh, can take some significant adjusting to. Right now we have the sun in Sidereal Capricorn uh, until February 14th, so a couple more weeks. Uh, that's of course Valentine's Day if you're here in North America or uh, um, February 14th is when the sun will move into Aquarius. It's going to leave Capricorn of course on that date. Uh, so just a date to be kind of aware of um, oftentimes when we have uh, planets changing signs, like we do have quite a lot of coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks, we would tell you to keep an eye on the dates around that sign change transition for some sort of event to arise that could clue you in to uh, what that transit might be bringing up for you. Uh, and you can do that with the sun as well, although I think we do, uh, we place a little bit less emphasis on it with the sun because the sun is really uh, more descriptive of the seasons of our life that we're going through, right? Uh, where our uh, efforts and energy are flowing at any given point in the year. Uh, but with that idea in mind, to kind of keep an eye on the date that a planet is shifting from one sign into the next, making its ingress is what we would say. Um, I want you to keep an eye on January 31st. Coming up, we have Mercury and 
uh, Saturn changing signs that day. Um, and then we have some other sign changes that we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. But let's kind of wrap up where we're at with the current transits right now. Of course, we have Mars and Scorpio. That's going to last until February 9th. And keeping in mind, that's right around our February uh, full moon. So um, that shift from Mars into Scorpio will mark one such type of transition where you might want to keep an eye out for events. Mars is a little is, is kind of a moderate term transit, usually seven weeks or so. Uh, but while he's in Scorpio, Mars, keep in mind, is in his rulership, right? He's a traditional ruler of Scorpio. And so Scorpio peeps really kind of have the upper hand during this transit when Mars is in Scorpio, especially around taking action or pushing forward. So if you are Scorpio sun, Scorpio rising, this is really the balls in your court, right? Mars in Scorpio is the right time for you to be taking action towards things that are important to you. Non-Scorpio peeps, have a look at your Scorpio house for clues as to where your actions can have Mars's support right now. That's where you want to be focusing your uh, your efforts and your activities is the house that Scorpio is occupy occupying, excuse me, in your sidereal natal chart if you don't have Mars rising or, or excuse me, Scorpio rising or Scorpio sun. Uh, we have Venus and Aquarius right now. That's only for uh, just a handful more days through February 3rd. And then she's going to move into Pisces. And remember, Venus and Pisces is an exalted placement. Uh, she'll be in Pisces through February 29th. What I like about this is that it encapsulates our North American Valentine's Day having Venus in Pisces in her exaltation. And so I think this can create kind of a, a sweet little window to enjoy that energy for, uh, for folks, depending on your own personal transits. And it'd be nice to have Venus in Pisces for this time of year. Uh, but she's going to make her entrance into uh, Aquarius, excuse me, uh, January 9th until Feb 3rd. I have two different dates here. So February 3rd, yes. Uh, and then she's going to be in Pisces. So looking ahead, we're still kind of shaking off this Saturn-Pluto conjunction energy. And I just kind of want to highlight that. Sit tight with that because we'll be shaking that off for some time. It's a longer term conjunction. It's a longer term transit. It's going to taper off very slowly over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. So wherever you experience that conjunction in your chart, if it was a, a major issue for you that it brought up, if it touched you personally, just know that you're not, you know, hopefully like the most intense part of the transit is over, but you're still going to be adjusting to this. Um, you're still going to be seeing this play out and kind of settle down over the coming months. So expect for that theme to still be something prevalent in your life in the coming year, wherever you hosted the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in your chart. Uh, Mercury moving into Aquarius and Saturn into Capricorn coming up January 31st. So uh, Mercury will be in Aquarius until the end of April because of his upcoming retrograde. So this is kind of significant. Mercury normally only spends about two, two and a half weeks in a given sign. So this is a long-term transit essentially for Mercury to be in Aquarius until the end of April. That's a really long time. So for those of you who have Aquarius sun or Aquarius rising, you're really gonna be feeling this Mercury transit, uh, especially around Mercury ruled activities and themes in your life, things that have to do with communication, or that have to do uh, with transportation, that have to do uh, with commerce and agreements and discussions or negotiations, uh, anything having to do with engaging your analytical mind, analysis, research, uh, crunching numbers even, uh, these sorts of things could be active themes where you might be doing quite a bit of work uh, and going over and reworking things uh, but like I said, this is predominantly affecting folks with Aquarius Sun Rising. Now, folks with uh, Virgo or Gemini Sun Rising who's, who might be ruled by Mercury, or at least their Sun or Ascendant is ruled by Mercury, you're going to feel this as well. Uh, so if that is you, if you have Virgo Sun Rising or Gemini Sun Rising, look to where Aquarius is in your chart and know that uh, your attention is going to be there quite a bit. Uh, it's going to be the main focus of your attention between now and the end of April when Mercury finally does leave. But this is kind of an unusual thing. Oftentimes when Mercury does retrograde, he'll retrograde back into a previous sign. 
uh, rather than spending so much time in one sign. But uh, his transit just happens to catch Aquarius this way this time. Uh, and so just know, uh, Aqua Babies, February, um, you're going to have a double dose of difficulty. So kind of prepare. And I would do as much as you can right now to prepare. Like I was saying earlier, we do have a few days between now and February 2nd when Mercury enters the shadow of his retrograde where you can wrap up anything super important that's Mercury world activity. Things like contracts or negotiations, discussions, uh, any of those sorts of things. If you have a uh, business arrangements or uh, dealings that you're in the middle of, get those things wrapped up. If you have big ticket purchases that you need to make, uh, or if you need to make investments in any sort of electronics type of equipment, do that now before we hit February 2nd. Otherwise, just plan to wait, put it off uh, until after we come out the other side of Mercury retrograde, okay? Now at month end also, we're gonna have Saturn move into Capricorn and he's going to be there long-term too. Uh, so oftentimes we'll see the same situation where uh, Saturn might leave a sign and then retrograde back into it before he leaves for good uh, and transits the, the, uh, the new sign completely. Uh, that won't be happening this year. When Saturn moves into Capricorn, his entire uh, retrograde cycle over the summer is going to keep him in Capricorn. So there won't be a second chance. Usually that retrograde gives us a second chance to go back and tie up loose ends in the house that Saturn just left. To tie up any loose ends around unmet commitments or outstanding obligations or responsibilities that we have. We're not going to get that second chance this time around. So this time around, when Saturn leaves, uh, that's it. If there's consequences to uh, um, where you're at or how you've used Saturn's transit of Sagittarius, uh, expect to uh, feel the full force of that essentially uh, right away rather than having a chance to go back and kind of uh, wrap things up in terms of your Saturn-related business. Uh, what that does mean is that for folks with Capricorn Sun and Capricorn Rising, strap in because this is your this is your turn with Saturn. Uh, Saturn tests us and challenges us when he transits uh, a house in our chart, and where he's looking for weakness, uh, he's looking for where you haven't been holding up your end of the deal, essentially. Uh, and if there's any weakness there, he'll shine a light on it and uh, bring it to your attention. And you really won't have much uh, choice but to deal with it. Um, for Capricorn Sun and Capricorn Rising, what that means is that Saturn's transit is is here come February. Uh, he's going to be beginning that test and you, you won't have any breaks. You won't have any breathing room until he's ready to leave in about two and a half years from now. Okay, uh, so he's going to be testing, he's going to be looking for weak links, he's going to be teaching you long, hard lessons about commitment, about self-discipline, uh, about maturity, about being responsible. Um, he wants to see what you do when you encounter obstacles and limitations. How do you respond? Do you throw up your hands and walk away? Or do you find a way to work with the hand that you're dealt and still push forward towards whatever that goal is that you have? So this, this is the type of testing that Saturn's going to be doing in your Capricorn house in the coming two and a half years. So just be aware, um, this, is, this is it. Come February, Saturn will be, will be ready to challenge you. He's going to be looking at uh, shaking your foundations and seeing how stable they are. And if they're not stable, you'll be rebuilding foundations from the ground up, basically. Uh, and those foundations are meant to help you be on solid ground as you push towards your highest ambitions and your goals. And that's what that's what Saturn wants to see you do. So here we are. Get with the program, right? <laughs> that's basically uh, where we're at for the coming um, the coming two and a half three years. Okay. Uh, and then February 9th, we're going to have a full moon in Cancer. Now, keep in mind, that's the same day that Mars enters Sagittarius. Uh, that particular full moon in Cancer, interestingly enough, is going to trine Mars a little bit widely by about five degrees as he makes that ingress. So what that means is that I do expect Mars 
and his uh, entrance into Sagittarius to be directly relevant to activities at the full moon coming up February 9th. And we'll talk more about that when we have our full moon in Cancer uh, releasing practice. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to call that out. Mars and the moon are not necessarily energies that work well together, right? We're talking about a fire sign and a water sign, right? Uh, but expect that those energies will both be active at the full moon, uh, February 9th. And then also uh, keep in mind, like I was talking about at the beginning of the broadcast, our eclipse series is going to be active on the 8th and 9th again as well. And that's the eclipse that we, the eclipse from January 10th. So this is the one, the 10th was our eclipse in Sagittarius, right? Uh, and so watch for that as well. Keep an eye on that date if you're directly affected by that eclipse. Um, it's not too late for your new moon intention setting practice. Did I give you a link for that yet? I didn't. So I will include this link in the video description if you're catching the replay on YouTube. In the meantime, that is the link for the new moon and Capricorn intention setting uh, practice that we just did, the guided practice uh, that we did in the Serial Insights Astrology uh, Facebook group uh, here on Facebook. You still have another 10 days or so to capitalize on this energy, but I would act now rather than later because the closer you can do this to the new moon, the stronger the energy is for you. And like I was saying, this is the one and only new moon you get this year with all planets in direct motion so that you can make an initiation with the full support of the solar system behind whatever it is you want to accomplish. Um, and like I was saying, I will repeat it, do it for your sun and for your rising sign. It's that important. Um, and then join me live Saturday, February 8th in um, the Sidereal Insights Astrology group here on Facebook uh, at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or 2.30 a.m. GMT, 1.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time on Sunday, February 9th, if you're watching from the UK or from Australia. It'll be on Sunday. Um, but we're going to have our live uh, guided full moon and cancer releasing practice that day. And so you can join us. I'll include a link uh, as well for joining the group. If you're not a member of the group, you have to be a member of the Sidereal Insights Astrology group here on Facebook in order to join me live. Otherwise, you'll have to catch the replay, um, which you can do if you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, the Mystic Physics Astrology YouTube channel. Uh, you will be notified whenever I upload a new broadcast, if you subscribe there. And I want to invite you, please follow Mystic Physic on Facebook and please like and share this broadcast if you got any benefit from it. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time.